Just wanted to pop on real quick and tell you that today's video has video chapters. You can click down in the description box below and go right to the timestamp of the part in the video that you want to see. Today's video is a little bit longer, so I just thought I would let you know before we get started. Hello, I am so glad you have joined me today. Today we're going to decorate a tiered tray in a bee theme for summer, but we're going to do a few DIYs first. So as you can see, I have some pieces sitting here that I'm going to be using. And what I want to do is I want to take those two containers and I want to mix them together and make a yellow that matches this candle here. Hopefully that's what I'm going to do. I have the golden yellow and I have the caramel. And I want to tell you that this came from Bullseye's Playground and it was a dollar. I was going to use this, but it's all dried out. It, it's nasty, really. Um, I'm just going to be tossing that in the garbage. So I'm going to take the golden yellow and the caramel and I'm going to mix them together and I'm trying to get a particular color. The golden yellow is used a lot, I think, for the DIYs when it comes to the bee themed pieces but I want to mute it just a little bit. Um, it's a little bright uh, for, for what I want. I want to kind of just kind of tone it down just a little bit. So I'm going to mix these two together. All right, I've mixed these two together and it's equal parts, but um, I'm probably going to add a little bit more yellow into this mixture than caramel. Little tip. If you want to make sure you know what that color is going to look like, since I'm painting this on wood, I'm not painting it on a white background. I've just put my different color combinations here on the side. I'm just checking them out to see which one I like the best. I have three combinations. I did do one other combination. And then I also have the golden yellow by itself just to see what that looks like. All right, I've got a clean plate here. I'm going to mix the caramel and the golden yellow up again. And I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow in there, mix it all in, and then we will be ready to go and start painting. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a foam brush. I'm also gonna be doing that wood slice there that you see. And I'm just putting it on and I'm also, I put it on there and I'm dabbing it a little bit to get some of the paint off. And I'm kind of just like giving it kind of like a um, I want to say whitewash look, but it's, I mean, it's not white, but I'm just kind of, I want to see the wood through there. I don't want to give it a solid color. And so you see me kind of dabbing it off there and then putting it all over the wood piece that I have. Now that wood piece came from, they had these risers. They were in Bullseye's Playground and um, they had two of them. They had this smaller one and then they had a larger one. So I'm painting the smaller one that they had. Okay, now I'm painting my wood slice that I have. The wood slice came from Hobby Lobby, and I'm giving more full coverage to this. Um, I don't really want those rings to show through because I'm gonna put um, a vinyl decal on this, and I want you to be able to see the details of the decal. Okay, here is the decal that I'm telling you about. This is a little bee skep, and um, I made this with my Cricut. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just weeding out the pieces of vinyl that I don't need that are extras in between. And once I get all of that weeded out, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the, um, the transfer tape, put it on the transfer tape there, make sure it's sticking to it really well, and pull it off. And now I'm going to take it and put it on the wood slice with the transfer tape. And then I'll pull the transfer tape off and then the little decal will be on the wood piece. So you might want to, um, if, if you want to keep it on there, I have removable vinyl. If you want to keep it on there, you might want to use like a protective coat over the top so that it stays permanently. And I'm just taking some twine and I'm going to make a little bow with it. Glue that on there. Okay, I'm back to the other sign now, and 
I made some letters with my Cricut Honey Bee Farm. And then I also made some little bees. So I've already printed those off and weeded those out. And I'm just showing you how I'm putting them on here. So this kind of looks like a small little palette. And I thought that it would make a cute little palette sign. So as soon as I am finished putting this farm word here on the bottom of the palette, I'm going to go ahead and then I will take my little bees and I will put my little bees on here also. And these, um, I, I am not good enough <laughs> with this yet to do all three in a row together. I cut them out separately and put them on separately. And so I'm just lining them up the way that they need to be on here. I'm getting better with my Cricut. Um, I'm not where I would like to be, and I'm still experimenting with different uh, surfaces that I'm putting the vinyl on, but I'm really starting to like it. I, I think it's a really neat machine to have. Okay, so I thought that I would use some of this lace ribbon that I have and kind of decorate the top here and uh, just give it a little bit of an antique kind of styling to finish it off. I'm gonna make a little bow and I'm gonna glue that on. And then that will be my little sign. Okay, my next project is a bee skep and I wish I had a different pot than this. This is actually a stack of pots. They were a dollar at the Dollar Tree. This was literally the only thing there that I could find. You see I have a whole slew of them there. It has kind of a flat top. I'm not quite sure how that's going to look when I go to do the top of the skep, but I'm going to work with what I have. This is what I have, and I'm going to keep them all together so that it will be durable. And I have some embellishments, some ribbon. I'm going to use the rope to actually make the skep. And you're going to need some scissors, and you're going to need a Sharpie, and you're going to need some flowers to embellish it if you would like to have that. And I've got my glue gun. Okay, so disclaimer here, this is my very first one. I've never done one before. And so you're going to be coming along with me as I learn as I go along. So I'm going to take the rope and I'm going to be gluing it. I'm going to glue it on the edge there. And then um, after I glue it on the edge there, I will be going around the planter, making sure to keep the rope like tight to each other like they need to they're not there shouldn't be any spaces in between them so i'm using my glue gun here and um, i have the larger sticks of glue and i'm not quite sure if i really was kind of wishing i had my smaller glue gun still um, because the larger glue sticks um, i'm not really sure i think they worked well for actually making this project but there was a lot of glue that I had to clean off of it at the end because of it being the larger glue stick. So I'm not real sure about that, but um, I didn't get it uh, cleaned off as well as some people you'll, you'll see later on, but um, it was good enough for me. I'm not going to sell it or try to, you know, give it to anybody else, but just for myself, for my tear tray, it was just fine. Okay, so the key for me that I found when I started wrapping this around and gluing it was that I needed to make sure that I glued it so that it not only stuck to the planter, but that it stuck to the other piece of rope too that I had put down before it. And then you want to make sure that you're pushing those tightly together so that they um, there's you don't want any gaps in between. You don't want to be able to see the um, the planter underneath. So you wanna make sure that as you're gluing it, you're pushing those pieces tightly together to the rope and to the planter. And so you do need to press with your fingers. And I definitely recommend using some sort of cover for your th fingers and your thumbs because I actually got to the point where I needed to use my thumb later on and then I didn't have it and I burned my thumb but um, definitely get some finger protectors that will uh, because the glue is hot and you do use a lot of glue you're gonna go through quite a bit of glue here 
Um, I went through, I know I went through half and then one whole glue stick. So I, I maybe used two of the larger glue sticks on this. So I'm just gonna let the music play while I finish wrapping this around the planter. So as we get to the top, it's getting a little trickier here. And as I'm getting to that flat surface, and so I'm going to be trimming it off here, and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to make my handle before I go ahead and continue with the rest of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm taking some more rope and I'm going to make like a little handle for it in the middle there. And so I'm just measuring how I want to make the handle and how long I want it to be and where I want it to be. So I'm just kind of getting an idea there of where I want it. And then I will go ahead and trim those ends off. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and lay my glue in there. You are going to need a lot of glue for this project. And you see I have my finger protected there while I'm pushing the rope down into the center because I want that to stand up straight. And then now I'm going ahead and I'm adding in my rope again. So at this point, it gets a little tricky when you get to the top. And again, I'm going to reemphasize that if you can get a planter that has kind of that more rounded bottom, that would be better. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to actually look like a bell shape or if it's going to be flat along the top. So I'm kind of adding my rope like to the top of my other rope but then I'm kind of like no I really need to make sure that it's secured <laughs> partly to the planter also so I'm having a little bit of an indecision here again this is the first time I've done this I don't quite have the right kind of pot and um, it's just a work in progress so I'm pretty happy with it okay I'm working on cleaning off some of the extra glue and what some people do is they will take like a lighter or like a, one of those butane things and they will singe the frayed edges of the rope. That finishes it off real nicely. I am not comfortable doing that. I've never done it before. I don't really want to do it. I'm just using this for myself. So I won't be doing that today. But I still think that it will look okay. Okay, the key here for me is to pick the best side of the skep to make the front of it. And I'm using a Sharpie and it's going to guide me and make us to make a circle. And I'm going to take part of the rope, I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to take part of the rope and I'm going to glue it around that circle to make an opening for the bees that that would be the 
the door, so to speak, or the opening, and then I will be coloring it in with the Sharpie in the middle. Another warning here, really watch your fingers and make sure that your finger and your thumb has um, some coverings on them. So this is wrapped around there, it's glued into place, and we're ready to start embellishing the top. Okay, one of the great things about uh, if you do mess up the top a little bit is that you can always embellish it. So I'm going to just take my buffalo check ribbon here that I made a bow with and I'm going to stick it right in the middle. And then I also have some flowers from the Dollar Tree. I have some pretty purple flowers. And I also have these carnations. I believe these came from the Dollar Tree also. I'm going to get something to put right in the center of that bow, but I'm not sure what yet. I actually made a couple Etsy purchases for this tear tray. I love, love, love this honeybee cake. Uh, this is made out of soap. It is amazing. I love it. And this is their website. This is from a company called Soap Etiquette. I'm not sponsored or anything. I'm just um, showing you what they have because I love it so much. Look how good all of that looks. And it's all made out of soap. I will leave the Etsy link below. That's um, how I purchased it through Etsy. I also purchased this little pillow from Love and Sunshine Signs also through Etsy. I also got a package of these rolling pins through Amazon. There were 12 of them. And I'm just staining this in special walnut minwax that I purchased at Walmart. And I am staining it dry and I am just putting my vinyl on here. This is removable vinyl and it's not sticking very well on this stain so it probably would have been better if I would have painted the center of it. It is removable vinyl so I can probably take it off and paint it and put it back on if I want. All right the time has come finally. I am going to take my four DIYs and the things I purchased and the things I already had and put it together and make a sweet little honeybee farm tiered tray. So there's my sign and my bee scap that I made. And then um, next to that, I'm going to be adding in my pillow on the top. And I'm not gonna talk through this whole thing. I am just gonna let the music play. And um, yes, that's a real jar of honey that I have, a local honey place uh, where I purchased it. it figured I might as well use it, that I thought it would be kind of nice to have it on the tray.
So there's my shelf I decorated earlier this month. I actually switched a few things around. If you're interested in watching that video, I can link it in the cards and in the description box for you below. But I thought my little table here in the kitchen was just the perfect place for me to put this bee-themed chair tray. And I'm happy with my DIYs. I may, I probably will paint the little rolling pin next time. I think that the vinyl will stay on it better that way too. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Thank you so much for watching today. I always appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. You can subscribe if you would like to see more videos. And I have a new video for you right here in case you're interested in watching another one from me. I'll see you in the next one.